Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how to render a 360 degree turntable animation using ProWalker GPU. And the result is the video that you see looping on screen right now. So we're going to use this nice Vespa model that I found somewhere on the internet. Um, we're going to set up a 360 degree camera path with SU Animate, and then we're going to use ProWalker GPU to render the animation. Now. If you don't have SU Animate, and I assume most of you won't, that's fine. I'm going to provide a SketchUp file that contains all the necessary camera paths. But I do want to go through the whole process um, and demonstrate how to set it up, just in case you either have SU Animate and want to do it yourself, or decide to get it in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. OK, so I've opened up that SketchUp scene, and this is exactly the same file that's available on the tutorial page. So Go ahead and open it up if you're going to follow along. I'm just going to switch into monochrome mode so we can see what's going on a little bit better. And I want to talk about the way I set up the scene and sort of why I did it this way. So if I zoom out here, you'll see the scooter is just sitting in a huge bowl-shaped piece of geometry. Now, the reason I did this is because ProWalker GPU cannot render object animation, right? So in, in some animation packages, what you might do is set the scooter on a pedestal or something and actually rotate the scooter itself 360 degrees. With ProWalker, we can't do that. What we have to do is leave the scooter model stationary and revolve the camera in 360 degrees around the subject. Um, this works really well, as you saw in that video. Um, it just requires us to account for the entire 360 degree field of view when setting up a scene. So a traditional studio backdrop wouldn't really work for this video um, because the camera is going to do a full circle around this. So in order to have that nice solid um, blue gradient in the background all around the scene, I just set it down in a bowl shaped piece of geometry and it ends up working really well. Now, as I mentioned before, this scene already contains all the necessary camera paths to, to do the animation. So if you didn't really want to follow along, you just wanted to basically put your own subject in here and render it as quickly as possible, all you'd have to do is delete this, replace it with your own model. Um, you could open up ProWalker and everything would be set up. So actually, if I open ProWalker right now, and then if I come to the paths panel, see i've got four different camera movements already saved in the view path panel so if i click tight low and hit play it's going to start previewing that animation path and these are all centered around the exact origin of the sketchup scene so as i said all you need to do is delete this model place your subject as close as possible to that center point um, and then reopen Pro Walker, and you'd be able to render that animation. So, back here in SketchUp, and I'm just going to show what you need to do in SU Animate to set up a 360 degree circle. So, this is the SU Animate toolbar. I'm just going to rip it off. And this is the dialog. As you can see, I've already got those same four camera movements in, in here, so I could preview any one of these by right-clicking on it and clicking play. And so this is just a slightly higher angle, but still a, a pretty tight camera position. Um, this one, I called it wide low because it's a little bit further away and closer to the ground. So to create these, essentially all I need to do is select create circle path. I want to find the center point, click here, and then I just drag it out exactly like a circle in SketchUp. And the radius of the circle is going to determine, obviously, how far away from the subject you are um, and how big of a sweep that camera movement is going to be. So I'll just place it somewhere in between. Right here is good. The number of frames um, determines how long the animation is going to be. So I set all those previous paths at 150 because I decided five seconds was a pretty reasonable amount of time for a turntable animation. So I just said 30 frames per second times five is 150. 
I want to uncheck rotate objects along path because we're not doing any object animation. What we're doing is animating the camera. So I click animates the camera and then I just need to choose a target. So in my case, we're going to target, oops, we're going to target this Vespa group. Uh, and you can target any, any group or component that's in your SketchUp scene. In this case, it's the only thing in the model. So we select Vespa group, click OK. And that's actually it. I just click Save. And now that disappeared because it's actually below the ground plane. But I'm just going to quickly move it up. So with the circle path selected in the SU Animate dialog, I'm just going to come and zoom in. And now if I switch to the SketchUp Move tool and make sure we lock it to the vertical axis, can move it to, yeah, right about there I think is good. Now remember, the Vespa is the camera target. So as the camera revolves around this circle, it's always going to stay focused on the Vespa. So the height of the circle path sort of determines whether we're going to be looking down at the Vespa or up. And at this height, it's going to be a pretty much dead on view. So now if I right click the circle and say play, we're going to see a preview. And that's pretty good. Um, I think it's a little bit closer in than the original version, but that's nice. So I'll stop that preview and just rename the circle. We'll just call this new path. And now we just need to export this camera path so that we can bring it into ProWalker GPU. Okay, so to do this, all we have to do is select the path, come up to Tools, and say Export Camera Path. There is a quirk in SU Animate. Uh, it seems that the export camera path function will only work for the final path in the list. In our case, this is perfectly fine because that's one we want to export anyway. Um, but if you did have a model with multiple SU Animate paths and I wanted to export the wide high, for example, I'd have to delete the two beneath it. But let's select this new path, come up to Tools, Export Camera Path, and it's going to play through the preview and then save it into the folder wherever the model is saved. Click OK. And then when that finishes, a second dialog is going to come up. Just click OK again. And I'm going to come into the folder real quick and just give that a better name. Um, I'll just use new camera path. And now we can import it into ProWalker. All right, so we're done with SU Animate. I'm just going to dock this back up here, close the dialog, and open up ProWalker. OK, once ProWalker has fully loaded, I'm going to open the Path and Animation panel. And as you can see, those four original circle paths are already in there uh, for you to make use of in the future. But we want to bring in the new one from SU Animate, so I click Import. And then you just need to find it wherever it's stored on your hard drive. In my case, it's right here, New Camera Path. Click OK. And I'll just rename it. And now if I click play, we'll see a preview of the animation. So this is ready to go, um, but before we actually start to render the video, I want to set up the lighting so it looks a little bit better than it does right now. Uh, the only light in this scene is from the sky, so at this point it's a little bit dark. Um, so to make sure this exports with the correct lighting and quality settings, the first thing I'm going to do is add the new path to a movie. And this is what we're eventually going to export, but we need to modify some of these settings. And the first thing I want to do is brighten up the lighting a little bit. So I'm going to close this dialog. And before doing anything else, I'm going to switch into photo real mode, because this is what I'm going to export with, ultimately. Um, and so with photos, photo real selected, I'm going to open the lighting panel and just bump up the physical slider. So probably something around I think right around here is what we had in the original. One other thing you can do is bring down the gamma, which sort of adds some contrast. So there's little subtle ways to, to tweak the lighting other than just manipulating the physical slider. Um, and this is a very low sample count, but if I added maybe, let's just preview it with 10. Yeah, I think that's pretty good for the lighting. So. I'll close this, 
If I wanted to change the background, this would be the time to do it, but I'm gonna leave it at afternoon one. I'm just using that afternoon HDR, uh, which is giving us these nice reflections on the Vespa's metal surfaces. And so I'm gonna come back into the, the Pass and Movie panel, and under Lighting Tone Map, with New Path selected, I'm just gonna click Use Current. And so now these new lighting settings are reflected in the movie that we're eventually gonna export. Okay, so the next thing we need to deal with is the camera speed or the length of the video. Now, I thought I had this uh, figured out with SU Animate exporting 150 frames. I assumed in Pro Walker those 150 frames at 30 frames per second would be a five second video. Um, but there seems to be, it's either a bug in SU Animate or some kind of mismatch in the way Pro Walker and SU Animate um, interpret frame rates. And I noticed when I played the preview, this video timeline is actually 1 minute and 14 seconds, which is way longer than what we want. So what we need to do is change this scaling value. And this is the only way when you're using an imported camera path to change the speed is to increase the scaling value. And so I played around with a few numbers and changing this to 14 you can see that the timeline goes to five seconds and a little bit of, you know, a few hundreds. So increase that scaling value to something around 14 or whatever you need to get the length of the video to something you're happy with. Okay, the last thing we need to configure is termination criteria. And what that means is the number of samples that Pro Walker is going to spend rendering every frame of the animation. So it's actually hidden down here at the bottom of this dialog. And right now, you can see we've got render settings set to PR mode, which is good. Samples is at 1,000, which is probably too many, right? We saw that even with only 10 samples here in the preview window, it's actually looking pretty good because of the denoiser. If I turn the denoiser off, it's pretty noisy, but I think if we increase this to something like maybe 150 and click OK, if I let that run, we'll see it's going to be a pretty clean frame. Um, so let me just pause for a second. And when that's finished, you can see, you know, that's a pretty acceptable quality level uh, for a five second animation. Um, so what we could do is set the sample count to 150 here, or because it's so short, if you wanted to overshoot it a little bit, maybe use 200, but I would say not more than that for a scene this simple. And the other option is to just use time. So if you're really pressed for time, you've got a deadline, uh, and you know you need this done quickly, you could just set this to 20 seconds per frame, for example. Um, and because it's only 150 frames that we're rendering, it's gonna be done uh, that's like something between five and 10 minutes. So that's one way to really limit the amount of time that it spends. But in this case, I'm gonna keep it at 150 samples and say that it's ready to go. All right, so we've imported our camera path, we've adjusted the lighting, made sure that sample count and speed is correct. And so I think we're ready to export the video. Now to do this, I select movie one, make sure that the movie properties are the way we want them. So I think the only thing I'm gonna change here is bump up the resolution to 1920 by 1080. Uh, H.264 is a good output format, 30 frames per second. And I'm just gonna leave bitrate at its default value. So when all of that's set up, I can come up here, click the play button, create movie, uh, choose where I wanna save it. So Vespa. 02 because I don't want to overwrite my original. Click Save, and there we go, rendering 160 frames. And so that's going to take, you know, as long as it takes. And when it's finished, we'll have our final video. All right, so here's the final result one more time. Uh, I hope that was clear, but if you do have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me either on the Podium forums or through Podium support. Um, and as always, if you create something with this tutorial, we'd love to see it. So let us know or post it in the gallery forum and have a great day. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one.